we need some people hosting. 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 Uh, but you might not be so, so familiar with Childs. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Childs proposition. So it's a nascent proposition within um, the Holton UK group. Um, and within the organisation, it plays a, a role in education, learning, and development. And it's essentially mobilising all of our resources to essentially give us the opportunity to win. Um, and winning doesn't necessarily happen sort of in the outside, it happens on the inside, so in the classroom, but also on the outside. So um, if you've got any organisations or any groups, and we help host Youth Psyche Days, uh, which Mike runs, um, just around the corner, which again starts to mobilise um, different types of resources in people um, and teams. So um, this is a Curious Cows sort of, uh, sort of child's talk. It's the third, I think, in the series of your talk, the World Talk. The World uh, Talk. The World Talk, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, talk that has uh, gone beyond World Talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, still still yet. Yeah. So this is the, the third, um, and um, this is the most intellectual, I think. So we're going to have, um, yes. Mike's going to talk five minutes about the origination um, of the book. Um, but then we're going to have an interview where there's five or six questions, then we're going to open it out to the floor. So if you've got some really hard questions, but none to me, and I'm going to pass that. Um, we'll open out to the floor. It is being videoed, so it's going to go out and the same as all the other talks. So we've got a brilliant talk from Matt Rogan on data driven sport, brilliant talk from John um, on leadership, brilliant shop, shop talk from John on resilience, and an okay one from me on psychology. Yeah, that was very good, good. Yes, it was it did, very good. <laughs> so um, I'll hand over to Mike, and Mike's going to talk about the origination of the book. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll go into some questions, and I'm going to sit at the front to give you a bit of support. Great, thank you. Um, I'm just going to hold a racket because I think better and talk better with a, with a racket in hand. Um, actually, I won't do the whole talk, but um, just in case I need a little bit of support, it's a bit like a crutch for me just to uh, keep me going. But um, thanks very, very much for coming tonight, and um, largely amongst uh, friends, actually 100% amongst friends. And uh, so I really, really appreciate you coming just to listen for a little while. And uh, one or two of you, I mean, wonderful surprise to see Rob. So yes. Rob was here many, many years ago. Rob Maraconda, right in front, um, who I coach from a, from a very, very young age, and is in the book. And I will read a short little, a short little passage about Rob in, in, in the book um, a little bit later on. But. Um, uh, as you all know, tennis has been a, a massive, massive part of my life and uh, began on um, a Murram court in Kenya. Now, Murram is, uh, is, the, is the surface that they use to uh, build
uh, and the hard courts of Arizona. So I went from you know, the Murrum courts in Kenya to a, a similar sort of climate, actually probably a bit hotter in Arizona, to the hard courts of Arizona where I spent high school and played college tennis at the University of Arizona. And then shortly after that, moved to uh, the grass courts of England. So that sort of has been my journey in the grass courts, uh, artificial grass courts of Holton. But that's been my journey, and somewhere along that line, um, I studied history and English at university, and uh, somewhere along that line, there was maybe a little, a little voice inside of me saying, actually, you should really at some point use your degree, and, uh, and, and perhaps actually write something. Um, uh, I decided pretty much when I was 16, 17, that I wanted to go into coaching. I had a real, real passion for just helping and seeing people develop and learn and get better and being part of that sort of journey. Um, but I also thought one day it would be really, really nice to, to write a book. And my dad had always encouraged me, yeah, someday you'll write a book, Mark. And I thought, yeah, right. I'm not sure that's going to happen. But that kind of little message was there and that little sort of seed was planted. And so about ten years ago I just started writing. And, and I would, you know, write a couple of little bits and bobs and I would uh, put one or two things in a folder and stuff them away and leave them to six months and and um, <clears throat> and then about, it must have been, I don't know, three, four years ago, James kept pestering me, he's like, when's this book coming, when's this book coming, and I, it's coming, it's coming, I'm going to write it, James. But it actually took me to be flat on my back uh, for eight or nine days with a back injury um, to finish it. Well, not even finish it, actually write the large, the larger kind of bulk of it. So that was only in sort of September last year. And um, I was on my back with a back injury for seven, eight days. Two days in, in a slightly drug-induced kind of creative state, um, I started to, to, to write seriously. And one thing led to another. I've told the story to one or two of you, but Joel, who was my eldest, his football manager, was in book sales. I sent him a couple of chapters of the book. His name was David. And I said, David, what do you do to get something published? And he said, well, send me a couple of chapters, which I did. And he said, oh, I quite like this. He says, can I send it on to one of my publishers? And I said, yeah, of course. And um, uh, a couple of days later, the MD of Panoma Press, which is a small publisher in St. Albans, got in contact and said, no, I like, I like the book, I think we can do something. And there we are, one thing led to another. And um, 5th of May, officially, the book is launched um, through Amazon and other, other outlets across the country. Um, Macmillan is the distributor of the book, so that hopefully means that we'll get into Waterstones and some bigger bookstores and things like that. But that's really how the book came into, into fruition, and it's a so really it's, a, it's a, a reflection and a summary of a lot of my experiences, but the way that perhaps I view the game of tennis, and how that game of tennis, and how, how sport actually transcends uh, what we do on the playing field or on the tennis court, and actually into uh, our lives. And uh, so this, the philosophy of every ball, which is something that's developed over time, is, is really what the book is all about. And uh, I believe Jess is going to prompt me with a few questions. Uh, but perhaps we can uh, delve a little bit deeper into, into some of the content of 